Sports fans out there in the tubo sphere, to you, the individuals, part of the collective. Welcome to Fast Track Sports Rock College here on Talk Radio. First of the OMSR. I am your brief but concise host, Will the Alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. Talking briefly, concisely. The least busiest NBA trade year in quite some time. All right, I always do a little bit of a show like this. Beauty of the talk radio is it's always and only, only and always, two to three minutes. You get a longer highlight reel that way when I do these shows. Let you know the clipboard are coming up. Why is it where for us? So at least you can do this every hour for two to three minutes. You'll miss out on the quickest sport rants of the segment. All right, this is all made possible due to the OMSR sponsor, the Kickass DMCA. All that, all the goodies that it covers. So all the video highlights courtesy to ESPN. Little shout out to the NBA, everything else. <whistles> to the OMSR. All right, and then also included in the statistics in terms of why it wasn't a busy year, what made the most news, Steve Blake going off, and then Tim Legler gives a personal anecdote as to, it's a, it's a, tricky dicey situation you go you're in one town where you've been for years <whistles> immediately like the next day you're gonna have to uproot and go play for another team that's got to be like one of the more difficult things to do in sports they don't have this mid-season trade deal going on in the nfl right and it's certainly there's no mid-season transfers in college you'd have to sit out in terms of like you know if you transfer you're not gonna like have to try and fit in team chemistry wise with the university you go to so it's like one of those it's a unique thing in sports i would just say on the quickie sport rant of the segment here's why you know the nba may be more popular than ever i kind of disagree back in the 80s when you were a little kid like yours truly here you know, you knew your teams were going to be a certain type of chemistry and the makeup of a certain amount of players for more than one year. These silly-ass trades mid-season, one-year contracts, whatnot. Every team changes the face of their team every year now in the NBA. It's a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to pay attention to everything that's going on with every team as opposed to back in the 80s. Or even the 90s. All right, thanks for watching those silly DUIs while you're out there. Real quick. The NBA trade deadline has come and gone, and we're here to break down everything that happened or, or didn't happen here on this NBA trade deadline special. I'm Kathy Hubbard, and I'm joined here in studio by NBA analyst Tim Wegler, NBA insider Chris Broussard, and former NBA front office executive Tom Penn. And we've got NBA insider Mark Stein via Skype with any breaking news throughout the show. In fact, he's gathering information right now on the Clippers and Knicks reigniting a deal headlined by Amon Shumpert and Darren Collison. We'll have more details on that coming up later in the show. But here's a look at what we do know so far in the day. The Cavaliers acquired Spencer Halls for Earl Clark and two second-round picks. Halls is in the final year of his deal. Exiled Nugget, Andre Miller, he gets shipped to Washington. He'll back up John Wall. Also on the move, Gary Neal, who was part of a two-team, four-player trade, and Aaron Brooks heads from Houston to Denver. Also, according to Brian Windhorst, Antoine Jameson has gone to the Hawks from the Clippers. Now, no word yet on some of the bigger names, Chris. Uh, we're talking about Carmelo Anthony, of course, Rajon Rondo, and Kevin Love. What are you hearing about them? There won't be any word on those guys. You know, they're staying put. The Knicks never even entertained the thought of trading Carmelo Anthony. They feel confident about their chances of re-signing him in the offseason. And worst-case scenario, if he walks away as a free agent, they understand that 
That'll give them more cap room in the future, specifically the summer of 2015, when they can rebuild their team. So Anthony never was thought to go anywhere. Rajon Rondo, he was the biggest name out there, along with Pau Gasol. And the Celtics did entertain phone calls on him, heard what teams had to offer, Toronto, Sacramento, New York, Houston, but nothing really got close. Rondo will remain with the Celtics. Then, of course, Kevin Love. Again, the Timberwolves never really entertained moving him. A lot of teams think they should because there's really no indication he's going to stay in Minnesota. So a lot of teams felt, you know what, you need to trade him now before the summer of 2015. But they're going to take their chances. We'll have much more uh, conversation on those guys later in the show. Some key things to know about the trade deadline. There's been at least one trade made on the deadline every year since 1987. But this year, just five trades have been made. That's the fewest since 2008. Last year, there were a total of 10 deals on trade deadline day. That ties for the most in the last 27 seasons. And last season, the biggest name was J.J. Redick, who was traded on the trade deadline day. So far, the biggest name to be traded happened last night involving the Lakers, and it wasn't Pau Gasol. It was Steve Blake, and he was told after warm-ups that he was being traded to the Warriors before the game. Uh, and, you know, he was told and walked out in street clothes, and the Warriors, they're sending Kent Bazemore and Marshawn Brooks back to L.A. in the deal. Blake, who's been with the Lakers since 2010, will now provide Golden State with a reliable backup point guard for Steph Curry. And Blake saying that he has mixed emotions about the trade, mainly because he will be apart from his family, who lives in L.A. And when asked if he would consider returning to the Lakers when he becomes an unrestricted free agent this summer, he had this to say. It's one of the best places I've ever played at, and if in the future they wanted me back, I would absolutely, definitely consider it. Legs, what do you make of those comments? Well, a couple of things. I think, first of all, you know, he's just being honest and sincere about his feelings of playing for the Lakers. I know how difficult it is. I was traded one time as well. It wasn't during the season, but I can imagine how difficult that would be to be traded, a place you've been for four years now. Literally, 24 hours later, you're expected to be in another city, getting ready to play for another team. He's got a wife. He's got young kids. All of those things play, and all he's really doing is not burning any bridges, saying, hey, I love my experience here, and if that opportunity presents itself in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. But if you're Mark Jackson, it's probably not what you want to hear, but at the same time, you're understanding where this guy is coming from. Mark's a former player. He knows the emotions that go into it. It's a life-changing event. A lot of emotions swirling through your head at the time, and when you give a sound bite like that as you're leaving the arena, you know, you're, you're trying to encapsulize something that really you probably need a little bit more time to reflect exactly what you want to say. I think ultimately when he gets to Golden State, sees his role, finds his niche, and is winning, I think he's going to be a lot happier. So, Blake, not really the Laker people were expecting to move. Pau Gasol really was the name people were expecting. What are you hearing about what the Lakers are going to do with Pau? Well, now it's a matter of what they decide to do in the future with him. They were holding out for a first-round pick. They could have gotten severe financial relief. They could have saved $12 million and put themselves in a position to get underneath the luxury tax if they had done a deal with the Phoenix Suns for Emeka Okafor's expiring contract. They chose not to go that route. They wanted an asset in return for Pau Gasol. Now they'll just wait and see how it goes going forward. They have his Larry Bird rights at the end of this season, be able to resign you know what? what they want. If they I gotta step a in. Name free yeah, agent, he may have done his great in the NBA. Pretty good money. Uh, and, People you know, thought and he might. Him go as a he led the NCAA in so block we'll shots, see, led UConn to a national so championship. Uh, to but say he's not an asset. He's not going to help them. They are not going to the playoffs, even with Kobe Bryant. If he Wait a minute, you call Booster here at the Ole Miss Hall? I have over to Tom that Hay kind of riles me up. Screen. No one does it better. I don't understand that you got to pick up and just move at the drop of a dime. And Legs, you were traded once in your career. What was it like for you when you heard about the news? Well, it, it's ironic because I was actually on a season ticket holder cruise at the end of the 99 season, 98, 99 season in Washington. And, and so it was my third year in a row on that cruise, a bunch of season ticket holders, you know, I'm, I'm giving Q and A's and a basketball clinic and all of those things. We were docked in Bermuda, ready to head back to the United States. And I'm in my cabin, and I'm watching ESPN, and that's where the story was broke. I don't think you were here yet. I don't think you broke it. But that's where I found out about it, and it was kind of shocking. So it was obviously a, a you know poorly handled by the front office. Um, I quickly got to phone, got word that you know it actually was true, and, got, and you were scheduled to actually make speeches on behalf of the team. And got off the ship. 
I got off the ship right there on the dock, stayed. The ship left, and then I thought, oh, man. Because I was uncomfortable sailing back for two days in that situation. It was weird, and I was also kind of upset that it was handled that way. So now I'm like, well, how do I get home? I didn't quite think that through. I eventually did, obviously, and then <laughs> dealt with the ramifications afterwards. But it's, it's, it's life-changing. Emotionally, it's, it's, it's difficult. I had four great years there, uh, loved the community, entrenched there. Two young children, same thing. And you're like, tomorrow you're going to be here. And it's, it's very difficult to get a grasp on that. It doesn't really sink in until much further down the road that you're actually, you know, your life's headed down a different direction overnight, just like that, and you never saw it coming. Yeah, because if you ask normal people to just ship up well, you and could change. Yeah, you like someone told me, okay, you're moving yeah, to California you tomorrow. Like, uh, I got a couple things. I, I